Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're here at Muddy Thumper again. So if you're still here, this is episode three. I'm just uh, the redneck guy out in the shed building all kinds of projects. Um, this is my 84 Ergo. We're now on episode three. I've been just kind of updating it with accessories, doing my own kind of fun, fun stuff. Um, made a homemade bumper, homemade flip rack. It's, it's removable. I got a front and rear rack system or front and rear um, removable winch that you can put up there or put on the back or down lower, up or high. I'm not sure how well the high point is going to work out. Um, got the canopy on, nice glass windshield on her. I still have to paint the rims. A couple things we're going to be doing in this episode. Um, I'm going to be trying to fit a alternator, fabricate my own alternator design down onto this flywheel. Don't know how it's going to do it. I don't have a I don't have a lathe or anything. I'm just uh, making things work. That's all I like doing. Um, but yeah, guys, that's going to be my main thing on this episode. I got to finish up the wiring on my winch system. Aside from that, I'm really getting down there. I like to have. Um, I really want to have the alternator to keep my battery charged. You can see I picked up a um, battery maintainer or maintainer. You just kind of plug it in, quick disconnect. Keeps your battery nice and charged. Other than that, I need to wire in a new 12 volt outlet. I need to finish the Zast, finish um, cutting holes for the bilge. I'm not sure what else offhand. I gotta like just do some minor things like paint the wood on the back on the backrest that I modified. Clean her all up, paint the rims. I'm not sure if I already mentioned that. And just uh, try to clue her up really. And then She's going to be all ready to go for moose hunting or just going on trails and just having fun. But yeah, guys, we are slowly getting further ahead. Um, another thing I want to do in the future, I want to have like a little gun rack, maybe kind of attached on the back here. So you're ready to go type of thing for hunting. And uh, you see my little homemade lower upper removable rear winch system. I'm going to make a bracket for an outboard motor. So maybe we'll tackle all that in this episode. There might be stuff I'm forgetting. I'm just kind of having fun with this little Argo build. And uh, yeah, guys, we'll get this all up and done. If you're new on the channel, you like Argos and stuff, quads, three-wheelers, you name it, uh, feel free to drop a thumbs up and a like or a thumbs up is the same thing as a like and subscribe. Um, I like just building stuff. Sometimes if I don't see it online, I just make it myself because I got the idea, so I'm going to run with it. Alright guys, let's get into this video. Uh, right now, I'm just trying to get some ideas for how to run my alternator. Um, what you see here is a 20 amp John Deere alternator off a John Deere tractor. I figured I don't really want a big like automotive like Chevy alternator. I want a nice little compact one. This one's cool because it's a permanent magnet alternator. Watch, you might be able to see this. See how it kind of has like a little bit of a vibration after magnets in it because basically cutting the flux that's uh or cutting the light the electromagnetic field all it has is two wires on it and these wires are your pure voltage so if i could power this off the engine somehow the little pulley system 20 amps a nice mounting system i'll have an extremely simple really dumb reliable alternator So that little bolt was on my 17 horsepower. It looks like identical threads. So I'm just gonna swap on this little pulley here and I think that's all I need. If you guys don't have this pulley or you don't have one available, if you wanna do something similar, just look how easy that is. All you need is a little flange piece. It doesn't need to be like a three prong. As long as you have this, little spacer, a bolt, bolt it right to the, the flywheel. You can see that's probably like a inch and a half offset. That's all it is. You can literally do like, a, get a 
washer, have a machinist uh, weld on like a, a pulley to it, just an inch and a half space off, like offset, and make one of these rather easy. I was going to actually do that myself, but it seems like these are compatible. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw this on. That should be fine enough to throw, uh, spin my alternator. Okay, I just uh, retorqued that bolt on the manual. It said like 40 uh, foot pounds. That's all it is. Let's get this set to 40 foot pounds. As you guys can see, that was way too easy. Uh, just in case you're wondering, if you have like the, the engine that's painted red, the 18 color, 18 horsepower, it might say somewhere that do not use this uh, pulley to power an alternator. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> And the Argo that I sold, it had that done, still run like a champ. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm gonna mount an alternator, as you can see. As fast as that, I don't know, maybe that's a five minute job, not even. I have a pulley on my engine. That was actually the part I thought I'm gonna need the machinist for, because I didn't know, didn't realize that that one was as easy and compatible. So I just need to put an alternator right here, get a nice little belt. Uh, make an adjustable bracket so we can put tension on it and uh that's it wow way too easy to put an alternator on an old argo way too easy okay guys back out in the shed here just went and picked up a little belt i'm not sure if it's gonna be the right size <laughs> i'm gonna just making this work um this is a permanent magnet alternator 20 amp off a john deere tractor um pretty sure with these here i don't remember all my uh my motors courses and stuff but I think um, they're like you had to worry about the direction of these. So I was doing a bit of research. It appears that this is supposed to be rotating in a clockwise fashion. Uh, my engine works in a clockwise fashion, so it goes that way. Um, that means I got to position this kind of the same. So I'm thinking maybe like here type of thing. So I'm just going to basically go off up here, go off that bracket down below. Might even tap off this just for additional support. All I want to do is position this here. Throw my little belt down around the pulley. I'm not sure if this is the right side. No, that'll, it'll probably work. We're going to find out here now. Um, this is a 35 inch belt. It's the part number here. Okay, guys, sometimes you got to go back to the drawing board. I uh, just went back to Princess Auto. I picked up a 3.8. 3 8 by 33.25 inches. This is basically two inches shorter and a little bit narrower And I'm still messing around here just making things work, but as you can see it Fits on the pulley better fits on the other pulley better I'm going to brace this up. I just wanted my pivot point You can see um, The length is a lot better. I can pivot it down if I want to change the belt if I want to tighten it or whatever, put it up here. So I need to come up with some little bracket system. I might tap off, maybe use that bolt here. Um, if I can come off here, it'd be nice because I already um, kind of over in this area. I need something kind of over here. Hey guys, so I just wanted to show you a little bit about a charging circuit on an Argo. Um, just because it might help somebody, especially if you're having like an Argo that's not charging, something along those lines. So coming off your stator, you can see these two cables right here. Mine's like a yellow and maybe like an orange. Um, normally this is sitting right here. This is your factory voltage regulator. Takes the AC, converts it to DC through this and sends a line into your battery if you look on this you can see we have ac ac and b with a plus in the middle for battery ac ac and then you're going to run a line to the battery um, it's a good idea to run it like a fused one um, right here i'm going to um, utilize this space for an adjuster bracket for my alternator like to push it up and down type of thing so I'm just going to relocate that. Might not even need this anymore. 
this is the factory one for charging the battery and I'm running an alternator but um, <clears throat> if you guys are using the factory these two go to AC and AC the one in the middle on this thing is going to your battery and you want to have a fused this is my new one that I'm gonna be running you can see it's pretty much the same thing AC AC it has a, a B plus on the side like the left hand side for a battery it has an L for a light, like a dummy light to let you know your alternator is working. And the other one you tie into your ignition. So pretty simple. I'm basically going to utilize this one. Might have it stored like right here or something. We'll see how she's charging. If it's charging perfectly fine on just this unit, I'll just tape these off and not use the factory ones. Just use my alternator. If it's charging perfectly, yeah, I'll just run the new one. I won't use the old one anymore. But um, the old ones were notorious for not charging the battery. Like you have to basically have this engine up and running three quarter throttle roughly in order to get it properly charging. So I'm going to experiment with this little um, setup here. It's just a little bit about um, how the charging circuit works on these. But yeah guys, uh, just wanted to show you that. I'm just waiting on the paint to dry. I'm going to put my little bracket on, reuse that, put my bolt and nut on, adjust this nice and tight, and then I'm going to wire everything. So I'll take you guys along, of course. Might help somebody out. Maybe you want to put an alternator on something. This doesn't get easier than this. These two cables coming off this alternator are both AC. This is a permanent magnet. You don't need to charge it, create any um, state or winding or nothing like that. It's a permanent magnet. It's basically a dummy alternator is what, what this is. Coming off this, it's pure of AC voltage. And it doesn't need anything else. You don't need to power it. As long as that's spinning, it's going. Almost like those, uh, ever see the pedal bike headlights? You, you, you kind of like draw the pedal bike and the headlight comes on. That's literally the same concept. Alright guys, I'll be back now shortly when this paint dries. And uh, we'll get this bracket up in place and what, do some wiring. Hey guys, so it's taking a bit of time. I don't have the proper size bolts. I need a longer one here. You can see it's not all the way through the lock nut. And I need a shorter one down here, but I got it mocked together temporarily because um, it's a holiday today. Everything's closed. Let's uh, get behind this glass now. <laughs> get behind our safety glass and we'll see if she's going to hold together, right? Eh? All right. <clears throat> Okay, you gotta fix that return spring back there. <laughs> but she's holding together. All right, so that is alternator on. Um, I need a dummy light, like I wanna have an indicator, like a little red light maybe here or down here or something, so I know when that alternator is charging. But I don't think I have that. So I'm gonna see what I do have here. Let's try to get some temporary wires going. See if we can get this charging. Fix that throttle. You can see I got the vent hose poked underneath, so it's not returning. <laughs> All right, let's get to work. Okay, guys, so I'm kind of at a bit of a standstill because I need to be um, wait until stores open up tomorrow and pick up some connectors, and we'll do all the wiring. Just a recap, that belt is a 3.8 um, by 33.25, or 33 inches and a quarter. Um, you can see it worked out pretty nice. Here's my little adjuster bracket. You can see you can pivot up and down, you lock it in. I need a longer bolt and a shorter bolt, but it's not that bad. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to wire on this winch. Um, show you what I got here. Here's the, the solenoid for the winch and the little control unit. My controller, um, what's this? Looks like positive to the winch, positive negative to the battery, and negative to the winch, what looks of it. Um, I got all the quick connects, They're pretty cool, I ordered them on Amazon, you can see they just basically go together, so I just got to crimp the wires, stick them on in there, and that's pretty much it really. So I'm going to have to cut these of course, and then just do some crimps because I want to have a quick disconnect, but um, we're ready here now to find a spot to put this somewhere nice and secure, maybe I'll copy what the new Argos got done, uh, just see where they're mounted to. So guys, uh, this is pretty easy what I'm doing here. I'm just um, kind of getting a piece, 
piece of the wire just cut back there enough to fit on these little crimper balls. You just put them in place, I kind of crimp them. And then I just match the colors. So um, and this one, negative is blue. So I just put my negative in here, like in true. Make sure they click, and then I'll be able to click them together, you see? So I can kind of just put this wherever I want it to. And then they'll slot together and be my quick connects. So I'm just gonna get this done here now, and um, we'll get some wiring done. So I need to uh, run this to my ignition switch. That's um, the little power for the, the switch. Or the controller never actually looked at the diagram for it um, okay so I got those crimped pushed together positive positive pretty cool eh um, see if she works perfect that is wicked I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna be doing as well I got it over here in my uh, toolbox. Forgot to mention it to you guys earlier. I got uh, bus bars. So these are really cool. I got a negative one here somewhere kicking around. It's in there. Here it is. <clears throat> so. Where I got a lot of stuff going on electrically, I got like my winch, I'm gonna have lights, I'm gonna have little LED lights, I got my bilge pumps, I um, might have an inboard heater, got the fan. I'm gonna find a way to mount these and then I can just run a positive off the battery to positive post and then I can just tap into these anytime I want a positive and run a couple grounds and then tap into here anytime I want to ground. So they're just bus bars. I bought them on Amazon. Type in uh, 12 volt bus bar and you guys will find them. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead now. Tie up some wiring over there. Then we're going to wire the alternators and the two voltage regulators. This for me is kind of a must because you don't want to always be reaching down here potentially knocking your connectors loose like knocking covers off. I've done it in the past. I've had like a, a winch wired reaching down here to boost the battery, knock the winch off. <laughs> so the less, the less you can be down rooting in, knocking cables loose and all that stuff, the better off it is. Okay guys, so I got my bus bars in place. I think I'm just gonna go with something simple like that up and out of the way easy to access easy to remove and that's where i'm going to run like my positive negatives relatively sturdy too you can see not much not much play put an extra bit of rubber underneath the positive side just make sure it don't ground out underneath um it's not going to get too hot because that is attached to the ear intake but as you can see it's kind of a wiring nightmare really so the only thing i'm going to have down here on the battery primarily is the winch Sorry from that, the starter cable and a ground. Other than that, I'm gonna run a ground, the wire to here, positive wire to here, and then all the small connectors and put them up here. That way they're not gonna get knocked too easily. I'll just get out my soldering gun, uh, do some crimping, stuff like that. This is what she's looking like beforehand. You can see it's kind of a, a bit of a mess here. I don't like how some of the connectors are like easy, easy to be knocked away. Like that ground, I need to do a nice cleaner job than that. And this is going to be convenient when I run stuff like lights and whatever. And when you get a mile ran, you just put these little plastic covers down over it, protects them, can't arc out on anything. You'll notice there are different heights. I done that on purpose. I wanted the black or the ground to be a little bit further away, a little bit lower, just to make sure that. Um, they're not gonna arc or nothing like that. It's not a bad area. So keep in mind I still have the wire in the alternator, the voltage regulator, and then hook I gotta re-solder those lights and stuff. And then we'll um tackle my bus bars. But kind of cool. I've never seen these done on an Argo. Some people might think that's a stupid idea. I like it. So I'm gonna roll with it. Okay guys, so 
So pretty straightforward. I'm just putting on my little terminals, got them heat shrinked. Um, as you can see on this one here, the factory, AC, AC, stator, stator. The one in the middle is going to go over to my battery, which I'm just going to put on my positive here and put a fuse in line. And with the other one, I'll show you guys a recap on that when I hook it up. It's going to be kind of the same, but I'm just going to come off the alternator. And I'm going to put a little light in, in there, a little dummy light, or like test light. Let's me know that um, the actual stator is charging. So I'll crack on a little bit, I'll get this hooked up, and then I'll show you guys what I got done, and then we'll test her out. Okay guys, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see, but uh got my multimeter here. Keep in mind I have my positive and negative up here, just an extra tap. So if I touch it off here now, you guys probably can't see that because I'm in the way. I'm getting 12.6 volts, so that's a nice healthy battery. Let's see if she bumps up at all with the alternator. And uh, keep in mind, the alternator is going to be more efficient and pull out more voltage, more amps, um, the higher she spins. I'm not going to spin, spin there, go up a whole lot because I'm not moving it. But let's see if it goes up at all. in i got over 13 volts already and that's just at a low rpm and mainly she's going to be getting her power and charging the battery when she's up about 70 percent throttle so she's working perfectly charging all that stuff there so that is my uh, redundant alternator i wanted to have that because i'm running the fuel pump electric fuel pump of course and these little cool brackets got this on amazon Hit, pop them on. I'm probably going to put them on a zip tie as well. If you notice on the positive, I got rubber underneath just to make sure that extra, extra little bit of rubber insulation so she can't ground out. Just a matter of uh, tidying up some of these wires now, like uh, zip tying it nice and tidy. Cover those over with some guard and uh, hook up my choke cable, put the cover on. She's basically done the way I want. And then we'll crack on with fixing the exhaust. I gotta do the headlights, I got LED ones. And um, yeah, I gotta also take you guys off the stand. I also have to put uh, my winch controller onto a battery. And also I have to put in my, my little quick charger and then put the floors in, stuff like that. But that is a big bulk. Hey guys, so we've come a long way, um, as you can tell in the pics. We're starting to look pretty dang good. Still got to do a few things, of course. As with any projects, you know, they never really truly end. <laughs> but I'm happy. Everything's coming along good. Um, I got a wire in my bilge pumps. I got a new 12 volt little uh, plug coming in the mail. Don't have it yet. But other than that, I just got to clean up all these wires. Some of that's like the winch controller. Some of that's for like the light bar. Other than that, and we're pretty much done, guys. So this has been a fun little journey um, building the Bogmaster. I'm going to be painting the rims and stuff like that. 
you guys don't really need to see that just sand them down scuff it a little bit of primer bit of paint paint them black again but there's my little uh 20 dollar princess auto mount universal mount i got bolted on strapped on as well just kind of prevent it from wiggling as much might do something better than that but i got there for the time being for a spear um you can see i got a cargo box that's upside down don't worry about that <laughs> I got some cool like gun mounts coming so what my plan is my rifles i'm going to be able to stick them like vertical right here i'm going to stick my license plate in here now shortly and uh put my panels in we're basically done i got an extra return spring on my throttle so she comes back a bit easier now before you should just stick you can see she kind of comes back a bit easier it's not perfect that's the way these old argos are for the most part um Gonna go ahead and put my brake fan down. Keep in mind, I got my flip seat as well, so that's kind of cool. Got some random stuff, spare belt and stuff down there, spare strap. Yeah, guys, it's been a fun journey. Um, I'll probably clue this video up here. You guys will see more Argo videos. I have a uh, orange one just like this out in the tent. It's not done up, of course, but the same model. I'm gonna be swapping the transmission on it, and you're gonna see a off road. A couple of off-road videos coming up with the Argos, probably with this one and my Argo right there, the six-wheeler as well. So you guys will see that. And at some point in the future, I'm gonna be making homemade tracks, so I'll take you guys along on that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're new here, don't forget to press that subscribe button and uh, let me know how you thought of the build. Any questions? If you see something that'll be a cool upgrade, let me know. I don't mind trying it out and uh, making things work like that. In the future, my plan is to modify some snowmobile tracks, but to do my own design. But yeah, guys, thanks a lot. See you again on the channel. Muddy is out.